walk into somebody's office and they have their feet up on the desk and you sit down across from them in an interview and they're putting their feet in your face, the bottom of their feet in your face that way, um, that's insulting, isn't it? Even though in our culture that's not as overt an insult. So there are certain things that would be insulting. If a person leans into you this way, listening to what you're saying, that shows much more engagement, much more interest, doesn't it? Than the person who does this, you know? Or the person who makes a big display. <laughs> <laughs> or the person who makes a big display of playing with different things to show you how busy they are. You know, they, they, they do this whole routine. These are all things where you have to learn to start paying attention to the environment that you are in. Because you're not going to be an effective leader if you don't pay attention to these more subtle but absolutely vital things. Because quite frankly, how we talk to each other and how we disagree are two very strongly interwoven things. 80% of communication is nonverbal. 80%. Okay? And by nonverbal, please do not confuse this with what people call body language. Okay? Body language is a popularization of the concept of nonverbal, and it's a it's a pretty meaningless term. You know, it's, it's, it's like saying, um, well, she was wearing X clothing and that, me that sent a message off. You know, I mean, that's, that's only one tiny little piece of it, okay? That's t a tiny piece of it. Nonverbal communication includes things, and if you want, I can send you, I will email these things, you know, to Rachel, she can pass them on to you, you can look at them if you want, but I'm not doing lots of paper here for obvious reasons. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that there are things like haptics, which are touch. And touch is, is a, an extremely important part of nonverbal communication. Why? Because if I touch someone, and I don't know you, and I'm constantly putting my hands all over your shoulders, your arms, your this, your that, at a certain point, it's going to start getting a little creepy. You know? Because it's like, well, why is this person touching me so much? But if you're with a friend, and that's, you know how some people are hitters? But that, you know, they're just constantly whacking you, you know, they're like, hey, did you have whatever, you know? Well, you don't take it as a, an aggressive act because it's their way of communicating. It's an affectionate action from that individual, okay? Um, so. There's, there's different ways in which these things play out. There's also things like um, vocalics. Now, we tend to think that speech is not nonverbal. What we're talking about is text. Text is just the very words that you speak. But the nonverbal part of it is the volume, the timbre, the uh, intensity, um, you know, the uh, pitch. Uh, all of those factors have to do with, with the nonverbal aspect of it. So a person who speaks in a flat monotone and really talks to you like this all the time is someone that you're going to have a hard time beginning to really pay attention to after a while. Now what I added to that was, what I added to that was oculesics, which actually gave it more interest in it than it would have had if I had not taken my eyes and looked back and forth, okay? Um, so basically, I turned and I looked at you at one point. And when I looked at you, you all thought I looked at you as well because I switched across. When you do that, you're adding some level of interest, some level. But if I were to look up here and say, uh, leadership is something that's very important as you consider going out into the world and finding a place of significance, it would be important that you make sure that you know that there are a variety of forms. You see, I mean, at that point in time, how engaged are you going to be? Not at all. And you're going to begin to worry about my sanity, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. There are certain cues that tell us that person is not quite right. There are things that make us, when we are walking down the street, and these are lens of bias things, there are things that make us say, I'm going to cross to the other side of the street now when I see a group of people ahead of me. Now, in some cases, it could be socioeconomic or racial bias in some cases. 
In some cases, it's gender related. Um, a woman walking alone late at night sees a group of 10 guys up ahead standing around with a bunch of beer bottles in their hands and so on and so forth. Would be pretty stupid not to cross the street, okay? She'd be actually brighter if she turned around and went in the other direction. Because that's not a, even though it could very well be that those are perfectly nice people who would be very, very helpful to her. Maybe not, you know? The other thing is, though, if it's outside the door of a club and you know that's what the place is, then, and they seem to be just talking and joking around, it could be perfectly fine. So you, you, we all have cues that we decode when we figure these things out. And some of us are better at it than others. We're better observers than others. But you can learn to be a better observer by foregrounding the whole nonverbal interpretive process as opposed to constantly keeping it as an intuitive thing. Okay? Um, it's happening all the time. You're decoding all the time. But you're doing it without a consciousness, a level of consciousness that says, oh, this is what's happening, et cetera. So if you really had any idea how many types of cues you are processing at any given moment in time, it's mind-boggling. It really is. But they're there, and they're important to you. So that's a big part of what you can learn with, with leadership. You can learn how to decode the nonverbal, and you can also learn what about your nonverbal is actually off-putting to people.